I bet you're looking for a good way to clean your greasy car parts and stuff, like especially when you're building an engine. Find out how I do it. I've actually had a few people contact me on my website asking me how I get my parts clean. If I'm using sonic washers, uh, do I have a cleaning vat, what kind of cleaning vat, what kind of... The biggest thing is the solution. I do have a cleaning vat, and I, I do have a small sonic parts cleaner, although it's too small to put some bigger car parts in, especially if you're cleaning, if you're rebuilding an engine, but uh, it's great for the little nuts and bolts, but uh, really, the biggest thing I use is kerosene. I, in, the, in my cleaning vat, I've got kerosene and the mineral spirits mixed, and I'll soak my parts in it for a while. But uh, for the normal home user, if you don't have a cleaning vat, I, in this video, I'm, I'm going to use a little pan with some kerosene in it, and um, I'll use some brush. I'll use the brush to, to soak the part and get the uh, grease and dirt loose. And sometimes you have to use a little wire brush. If it's an aluminum part and you don't want to hurt it, use a brass bristle brush. The parts I'm going to be cleaning are aluminum, but uh, cast aluminum, so a little, a little small wire brush still won't hurt it. Most of the stuff parts I'm going to be cleaning are cast up, uh, cast steel, cast iron. So uh, I just use that and scrub it. But then solvents like kerosene and uh, mineral spirits are oil based. and when you go wash the parts off with water, and even when you air dry stuff, you don't quite get rid of that oil. Now on car engine parts, it's not as crucial because they run in oil, or just a regular type of oil. But if you're doing transmission work, you can't have those oils on the disc or on the components that can actually cause transmission to slip. So as a rule, just so that I know I don't have any contaminants, I use Super Clean to remove all the oil residue off of all my parts. After I clean my parts in my kerosene or mineral spirits and stuff, like I, like I said, it leaves an oil residue and the best way to get rid of that is to use a degreaser. I have tried many degreasers, but the best one, that, the, the one that beats them all is, is super clean degreaser. Uh, whenever I wash the parts down and clean them, I don't bother drying them. I just wash it off with water and I'm gonna let it sit there for a second, but then I'll just spray it down with the super clean and it, it strips away all the oils and it even brings up more dirt than what uh, the kerosene stuff, stuff did. So it usually leaves the metal, aluminums or cast steel, cast iron, whatever it uses, it leaves them with a, a virgin look again, like it's brand new. And uh, I've never, I've built transmissions, I've never had a problem or anything like that after using the degreaser. As you can see that part is clean and I've already done put the seal in it. I did a, a real fine wire brush on the back side just mostly you know, because I wanted the gasket surface to be uh, good and clean ready for new gaskets. And as you can see the super clean washed off that brown haze that uh, even the kerosene wasn't removing. This is the counterbalancer shaft 
uh, after soaking it in my parts bath and then um, with the kerosene and the mineral spirit mixture and of course the bearing wasn't on it I just added that on there but uh, the gear was soaked you can see the gear how nice that came out looks like a new one sometimes if you can't get uh, if solutions don't get the crud out you can use a screwdriver and things like this that's what I had to do here but um, soaked it then um, I just sprayed super clean right on it and washed it off with water and it looked just like this like brand new like it had been boiled or in a vat or something but uh, you can like I said you can see the back side of this came out really nice <clears throat> this would be the part <clears throat> the super clean has a pH value I think of like 17 something like that you'd have to look it up I believe it's about 15 to 17 which means it's it's more acidic than it is base and it tells you on the bottle not to use it on aluminums um, I'm not sure what they're trying to Maybe there's particular aluminum stuff that's real shiny and pretty or something. I don't know. I've never had it ever hurt aluminum. And I've used it over and over. Like I said, this is this is cast aluminum. Uh, but you can see it didn't hurt it a bit. Uh, I mean, if you've got something that's really highly uh, polished aluminum stuff, you may want to test the spot or something. But uh, I would not worry about the, the being too acid that's going to hurt your aluminum stuff, at least not on car engine parts like this, like cast parts. But you can see that the uh, that the super clean degreaser actually does do a really good job as far as pulling out all the grease that's, you know, that's soaked down inside the uh, casting, even on metal. I mean, because you're looking here, this is this was cast aluminum. It pulled all of it out because I did not wire brush this. This is just how it, it washed it. And the same with here. I didn't wire brush it. Just came out and pulled it, pulled it back down to looking like the virgin cast that it is. And this is steel or cast iron. I wanted to give you an idea as a comparison to just cleaning with kerosene and cleaning with um, super clean. <clears throat> this valve cover here was washed down with the kerosene and scrubbed really good with a brush and then actually had a pressure washer ran over it and you can see that it still has bits of burned in grease and stuff and it just doesn't look quite really clean now I'm not gonna wash this for this video but those uh, other parts you can see how sparkly clean they came out after running the super clean that's the difference. You can get it relatively clean with the kerosene and pressure washing or just wash down the hose and stuff, but your best bet's going to be once you put that super clean on it, it's going to remove the remaining residuals. I'm very impressed with the all wheel cleaner that super clean sells uh, because not only does it seem to take off that brake dust, and I mean, it even kind of burned on brake dust, it takes that off pretty well. But uh, just as I always used uh, Wesley Bleach White on uh, the actual tire, I've never been I've never been one to believe to use the blackout stuff and make your tire look like it's greasy and shiny. I want it to look like a brand new tire, you know, just raw black rubber. So I've used cleaners for that, even McGuire's and other. But this right here, and that's that's required with a, a brush. I used this right here, and it's in this video. I just sprayed it on the tire. I didn't scrub it or anything, and then rinsed it off. Uh, and it made the tire look good and black. It actually pulled the dirt out of the tire for that, and it real easy. So I'd recommend using this for uh, all your wheels and your tires. Now for cleaning wheels, I use the uh, Super Clean All Wheel Cleaner. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna show much on this because I cleaned this wheel last week with this, and uh, it stayed pretty clean. Even though I've had to cram the brakes on, of course, I'm running ceramic pads, and that's the advantage of ceramic pads is they don't uh, dust like uh, regular organic or semi-metallic pads do. And I've used it on... Uh, 
aluminum wheels and I think it works great on those. This is just a hubcap. But actually it's honestly pulling off all the brake dust I did see. Or didn't didn't see. And you want to get it rinsed off soon. I don't have my brush today, but another tip is you can use this actually on the tire. I've done it, kind of like a Wesley's Bleach White, but uh, you can use it on the tire and scrub it with a brush. In this case here, I'll just, uh, and it kind of, it helps give it that uh, blacker look like a new tire. I'm gonna let it sit on there for a few minutes. And like I said, if you scrub it with the scrub brush, it's going to come out a whole lot nicer and a lot more cleaner. But I can see the yellow in the stuff where it's pulling the uh, road grime and dirt off the, the tire, which means once I rinse it and it dries, it'll look blacker. And you can see it looks really good. And we'll come back when the tire dries and I'll show the difference in the blackness between it and the rear tire or the other side. As you can see, the tire looks relatively black, and that was just from spraying the uh, Super Clean wheel cleaner on there, because I could see it lift up the uh, dirt, same as a lot of the other uh, tire cleaners. Uh, and it's not tire black; it just basically brings it back to the raw rubber look. And unfortunately, when I did this, when I shot it and cleaned off that wheel, I then had to drive the car someplace. So it's been on the road a few times. That's why it's got some spots on it. But you can compare it to this one, which I did not wash. And you can see it has a bit of a gray tint to it. So I will give kudos to the uh, super clean wheel cleaner. Like I said, I've been using it on the uh, hubcap wheels and regular aluminum wheels, and it's been doing pretty good. I uh, never really tried it much on the tire until I did this video, and I'm impressed. But when it comes to doing automotive parts, like uh, engine parts that when I'm rebuilding an engine, or even if I'm just detailing an engine that's gotten really heavy grease, uh, or one of my favorite things to do is, because I've been asked this too, if you have an oil leak in a car, how do you find it? Well, sometimes you can't find where the oil's coming from because it's all over the place. So I've used the, the pump uh, degreaser, uh, just direct it right onto the oil sprays. You can see it actually taking the oil off when you spray it on there, but just clean the oil areas, clean the whole engine stuff with this, wash it down, and then well, after it dries, start the engine, start looking for oil leaks. That's one way, that, you know, other than using a dye in the oil, but this works pretty good for just locating uh, oils or like a power string. Recently, the other day, I had a power string uh, leak, you know, so I put the reservoir bottle all the way down to the pump. Everything was, you know, covered with oil. I sprayed it cleaned it, started it, steered it, in about 15-20 minutes I found that all the oil leak was coming from the reservoir bottle. So this this is handy. If you if you do automotive work of any kind, you gotta have this. This this is gonna be your number one tool out of everything. I have even used this on wheels and, uh, and uh, up in the fender wells and stuff. So when I'm detailing a car I'll spray it up inside the fender well, you know the struts or the suspension parts, I'll spray the wheels. And everything and then wash, pressure wash it or just you know wash it with the rag and stuff but uh, this does great it blackens everything back out whereas like now gunk when you detail an engine if you use if you've ever used the gunk spray uh, gunk will remove the dirt but it leaves a white film left on it and it doesn't leave it doesn't make the engine look new it doesn't make it look like it's been detailed uh, when I used to detail cars a lot more than what I do now but when I used to detail them a lot and I'd use gunk spray. I have to go back over uh, the hoses and uh, if there's chrome or whatever, the paints and stuff, I have to go back over the rag and wipe that white film off. And even then, sometimes it still come back. Uh, but this, you spray it on, leave it for a few minutes. I wouldn't spray it on with the engine hot. I just spray it when it's cold and spray it on 
your fender wells, your strut towers, your engine or whatever, and then just wash it down with the hose. And when it dries, it looks like you've uh, taken it to a professional detail shop to have done. Okay, this truck isn't really that, that dirty. Matter of fact, I've cleaned the engine, but the uh, inner fender wells are dirty and it's got road dust and stuff on it. So I'm gonna use the super clean aerosol to get rid of the, just the road dust on one side. The other side actually got brake fluid on it from where I changed the master cylinder on it. So I'm gonna have to use the actual real super clean for that. Now it's about 90 degrees, so this stuff's trying to dry as soon as I spray it on there. <coughs> it doesn't require to sit just a second. Now, as you can see, the super clean, it, it cleaned that bottle up really well, it makes it look like a brand new one again. And even though that wheel well was pretty much needing to be repainted from all the uh, brake fluid that got on it in just the years, the last time this thing had an engine compartment repaint, and actually, this when this engine got put in, that was in the year two, 1999 or 2000. So, it doesn't look too bad for just sitting around because this truck doesn't get used. Now you can see this side, the uh, aerosol super clean. It did a great job getting the dust off and leaving no residue. So when you want to do a uh, detail on an engine compartment, make it look like new. And of course this is a bad example because the paint's coming off the, the wheel wells and it needs to be redone. And eventually that'll be the next, or be a video for the future of doing a uh, project on rebuilding this truck. But uh, of course the engine won't be rebuilt because it's only got 10,000 miles on it. it. It mostly just sits and gets used whenever I need to haul something. So it sits a lot. But you can see how well that stuff cleans things up. And I mean, even this battery looks you know, new. And that's just from spraying that uh, aerosol and wash, washing off of water. And like I said, this would have come out better if the, the uh, paint and stuff hadn't been run with uh, brake fluid and everything. But it did get the dust off and it made that bottle look really good because I don't know what was on top of it. I actually sprayed it spray about three times. I don't know if it's just it's probably that same black stuff that's over the edge, just tree sap and. Uh, nasty crap from, from the rain and the weather. Another key point, if you have an older vehicle you're using super clean or any, any cleaner really, a degreaser, and you spray your hood hinges or you spray your latch, be sure to go back over it with some white lithium grease because it will wash that out and make it stick. And like on these, this is a 77 Chevrolet pickup truck. Uh, issues with these is that the hood bends in the middle because it has a breakaway point right here. So if you uh, front end somebody, or actually take it back, if you rear end somebody, um, and bow, it'll bow the hood up instead of shoving it through the windshield and killing you. That's that's a. They sell this metal bracket to fix these, and that's kind of idiotic because what's going to happen is if you do get in a wreck, it very well can rip the hood from the hinges and shove the hood into the, into the cab where you're at and cut your head off. I mean, it's great to make it look better, but um, that's what those creases are for. But be sure to just lube all your uh, moving parts, your hinges and your latch and stuff after you degrease your engine. I've also been asked, do I use a cat litter? What am I using for oil spills on the floor? Um, 
I use the Super Clean's uh, floor absorbent. Of course, I still call it oil dry, but I use this, and I, I'm very impressed. It's really fine grain. Uh, it goes right to it, and you kind of have to sometimes uh, sweep it around into it, but you have to do that with oil dry anyways. Most people don't know exactly how to use uh, floor absorbents or oil dries. I mean, just because you pour it on the oil doesn't mean it's going to suck it all up. You've got to kind of sometimes push it around until it gets all of it absorbed. But this stuff works great, it works fast, and it, and it pretty much leaves the floor almost grease free. But what I do after I use the floor absorbent and uh, soak up the oil spill, then I'll just use their uh, aerosol degreaser and spray it on there and it, it, it works great. And it's it works better than what I've been using because a lot of times I'll just use carburetor cleaner or, or brake cleaner and spray on the oily spots to left after using the oil dry and wipe it, but this stuff works great. Well, one of my favorite things to use is the Super Clean Floor Absorbent. I mean, I've used, I, a lot of times I use cat litter because it's cheaper, uh, but you just have to use quite a bit of it sometimes when you got a spill like this. But the, uh, this is industrial strength. And it pours easier, it doesn't go all over the place like cat litter or, or cat litter type oil draws do. And sometimes on oil spills, and that was a pretty heavy one. A lot of people don't know how to use oil dries or oil, uh, oil absorbents. Just because you put it on there doesn't mean it's going to start absorbing all of it up. You still want to kind of expose the, the, the wet oil. This part had the dirt on it as well as oil. Okay, as you can see, it's still left just a little bit of oil, and you, you, one of two things, you can put a little bit more absorbent on it and it'll completely dry it up, or you can use the uh, Super Clean uh, Aerosol. And I'll do this a lot, sometimes when I have an oil spot that's just something you can wipe up, it helps degrease it, makes it not slick, so when you walk over to slip or track it anywhere. And I'd say it's pretty good because uh, these are not your uh, super bounty towels. These are uh, El Cheapo. I can barely pick up anything. <laughs> towels. And no more grease on the floor other than just a little bit of wetness from the aerosol, but it dries up and then the floor is completely degreased. So you see now I use the degreaser and the pump spray and then the aerosol and of course the uh, floor absorbent and the olive oil cleaner. <clears throat> They're all great products. They all do they all do wonderful. Super Clean has been around since 1978. I had growing up my uh, dad worked at a forklift truck place and that's where I kind of learned to work on or do mechanics work because I learned on forklifts and stuff. But uh, they were a big heavy gunk user. The gunk was a supplier for you know their hand cleaners and their degreasers and stuff. So when I started working on cars, I used gunk, and I thought it was horrible. It, it you know it, it smelled. It left a greasy film. It never did really do the trick, especially when doing car detailing. And as you saw in this video of the before and after of the uh, the duster I did. Now in that picture, in all fairness, I did touch up some black paints on like the radiator, I think. But I did it in a, just a subtle way to where it didn't look I repainted it. Um, the inner wells were already shining. Now I kind of rubbed them out a little bit after, but the Super Clean took it down to where it was already shining. I just kind of rubbed it out after that. But uh, it does a great job. It did actually pull the paint off the valve covers a little bit, but that's because the valve covers were soaked with oil. And the oil is actually what lifted the paint off the valve covers, so I had to recrinkle paint them and stuff. But, but you can see this stuff works great. I mean, you got to use it with some caution. I mean, 
I've never seen Super Clean ever hurt paint, but if you don't know what something was painted with, this paint was some sort of crappy spray can paint, you might want to be careful. When I have used the Super Clean for detailing like the engine compartment, I also go as far as to spray it up into the wheel wells and stuff like on the struts or the shocks with the suspension up on the frame and it helps blacken it up. It, it does a really good job when you uh, spray the undercarriage so it brings up all that road grime and, and it leaves it back to a factory look. It, it makes it look like new. So it, it, especially if you got the pressure washer out and you want to, I've actually even used the super clean in the, in the gallon jug, not the spray bottle. I poured some in my pressure washer uh, in, the, in the little soap uh, container that you think helps siphon the soap into the stuff I've used it in that. I've even used them cleaning windows. I've had I've, I've done some carpentry work and sometimes I've worked on houses that have really bad, really super heavy grime on the windows that uh, the Windex stuff that you can hook to your water hose just don't cut. So I put the super clean in there and it really cuts it off. Matter of fact, I recently got rid of a family house where my last family member passed away and they smoked in the house and. It was the, the walls, well actually in my brother's room, the ceilings were black where he'd smoked and he ran his stereo and just the combination of the two, it actually blackened. They, my mom and my brother both smoked in the house with the windows closed. It tarred up the walls, it yellow browned them and blacked them. So I used the super clean into a pump spray, you know, like, a, like you use for gardening and stuff, into a pump sprayer and I sprayed because I actually tried using the kills, the oil based kills, and it wouldn't cover it. So I knew I had to remove it or I have to resheet rock it. So I thought, well, what's the, what, what do I have to lose? So I went ahead and tried, tried the Super Clean, sprayed the whole house down with Super Clean, and removed all that grime and stuff off the sheet rock the ceilings. And the kitchen was paneling, and it, it didn't notice it at first until I cleaned it, and then I realized the paneling was a different color. So this stuff, because I, I, I've used it at home. And as far as uh, the degrees are, I've used it for uh, cleaning my ovens and even my uh, stove drip trays. So you can use the Super Clean products more than just automotive, but it is great. I actually I use Super Clean to clean my lawnmower when I, when I use the automotive grass about three or four times. It gets pretty filthy, then I'll just go ahead and uh, spray it down with Super Clean and wash it. It's one of the best degreasers I've ever used, so I'd give it a try. But um, if you have any questions about these products and how I'm using them, be sure to leave a comment because I always reply to my comments or go to my website and contact me through there. And if you found this video helpful, I hope you do like and subscribe. And be sure to stay around because there's always something I'm working on. See you in the next one.